Hello everyone, this is Sumerian and in this video I'm going to be uh, explaining one way to do some advanced logic and how to design it out prior to building it in the game. Because when you first start out doing uh, some of these logic connections, you really should design the whole thing out before you try to make it so you know exactly what uh, kind of connections you need to make. So in this video, we're going to use a yes-no flowchart type design just to figure out um, a slightly more advanced piece of logic. And we're going to be doing it off a of demonstration or using a piece of my repairing hero box to explain it. Now, if you've never tried this box, it's just a simple puzzle challenge where you have to move the five codes from that platform over there. there all the way to a platform over there, but you can only move them one platform at a time. And there are main, two main circuits for each platform, but the circuit we're going to discuss is this trigger area right here. In this trigger area, it has multiple functions depending on what's happened in the game. And I'm going to go over how to draw this out before we even start building so that uh, we know exactly what kind of connections we need to make the circuit work. I'm just going to step on it right now because I don't have a... There's no code stored here. So we're just going to really quickly show you the different things. So there was no code there, so stepping on that accomplished nothing. I step on that one over there, and there was plenty of code, so it let me have one. So it said you have retrieved a code. Now I just stored a code here, so I'm going to step on this. You cannot remove this code until the rest of the codes are past this platform. Okay. And that is because you can't remove the last uh, piece of code from a platform until all the other codes are past it. But if I put a second code here, I can then grab that code by stepping on this trigger. And now I have the code, and I can move it over to that platform over there. And I'm going to show you uh, exactly how to use just a simple yes-no chart to do that logic. So, the first thing we are going to need uh, to do a yes-no flowchart is we are going to need a question. And we're going to go over this in more detail later, but the first question uh, you're going to want to make sure it's very carefully worded so that when you first start your toy box and all your logic gates are open, you want the answer of that question to be yes by default. If nothing else has changed in the game, you want the answer of that question to be yes. So the first question we are going to ask, uh, just to, for that trigger area, is are the memory blocks all empty? Because when the game first starts, all the platforms except the first platform, the memory blocks are all empty. And so the answer will be yes. So the first question we want to ask is, are the memory blocks all empty? Um, and you'll see here, we're going to look at the yeses later, uh, the yes answers later. For now, we're just going to follow the no down the path. So if we say no, then the next question is going to be, is there more than one code here? Uh, because as you saw when I just did the little playthrough, if there's only one code, it didn't let me pick it up. Once there was more than one code, it did let me pick it up. So the second question is going to be, is there more than one code here? And so again, again we're going to follow the yes afterwards. For now, we're just going to follow the no. And the no is going to lead us to our last question which is, are all the codes gone from the last platform? Because the way the game works is, if uh, there are still codes in the platform prior to the platform you're on, then you can't take the last code from this platform. So that the last question we're going to be need to answer is, are all the codes gone from the last platform? And here, the yes and the no we're going to discuss in a moment because there's no further questions after this. These are the, the three main questions we're asking in this circuit. So now that we've asked the questions, we're just going to put in the, the answers next. 
So for the first question, are the memory blocks all empty? If we get a yes, we want to display text uh, that there are no codes here. Uh, if there's more than two codes, then we want the player to be able to pick up a code. So we're going to make the player blue, or put them on the blue team. We're going to subtract one from the counters at that platform. We're going to activate the checkpoint at that platform, and we're going to send them some text saying, okay, we've retrieved the code. Um, and the final question, are all the codes gone from the last platform? If the answer is yes, we're going to do the exact same thing as we did in the last question, because now the player is allowed to take code again. And if the answer is no, then we're going to display text telling them they can't remove this code yet. So that's the answers to the questions we have here. This is the logic I want to happen if the answers are um, to the questions are the valid answer at the time. This is what I want to happen. Now we also need a way to ask the question because Disney Infinity is a trigger based game. We need something to start the question process. And in this case, if Hero's blue, he's got code, or he's carrying a code, so I don't care if he steps on the trigger because he's already got a code. I'm not going to ask the question. So in this case, I'm going to set the trigger up so that if an orange team member uh, steps on the trigger, that's when I'm going to ask the question. Now what we need next is we need a way to tell uh, these question blocks whether their answer is yes or no. Uh, they won't just automatically know. There has to be some way for us to tell the question block in this game uh, whether their answer is currently yes or no. And if you look at the questions here, are all the memory blocks empty? Uh, is there more than one code here? And then the last question is basically there's only one code here, but is there a code before us? Uh, those are all number based questions. Are all the memory blocks empty? That could be a zero. Uh, more than one code here? Well, that's two or greater. And then the last block is based on uh, there being one code, but whether there's zero or more codes in the last platform. So they're all number based questions. And so what we can do is we can use some counters to answer this question. And so we're going to set up some counters here. And we're going to have them programmed so that their target count is 1, 2, and 3. Uh, just because we're basing this on the first platform we were just on in the uh, beginning of this video. And there were three codes there. So we're going to have the three counters here. And how we're going to use these counters to answer the questions is we're going to set it up so that the first counter, the one that's got the value or the target count of one, if it reaches zero, it's going to open or send an open message to the top question. Are all the memory blocks are uh, empty? And open in this case is going to signify the answer of yes. And so if that counter reaches zero, then yes, all the memory blocks are, are empty, so we send it open. And we're going to use the target reached of 1 on the first question to say no, they're not all empty. If we have one code in here, they are not all empty. So we will send a close, which is signifying the answer, or is setting the block up, so that if you ask the question, that is the confusing part, I suppose, here. Um, we're not answering the question when we hit close there. We're just setting up the block so if it asks the question, and the question is basically an orange team stepped on the trigger area, that's when the questions are asked. So we're setting it up so if the player steps on that trigger area, our logic is now set up so that that first question would answer no if it happens. Um, so the target reached, which means if that counter has reached one, we're sending a close to the top uh, question, or we're also sending a close to the second question, or telling it the answer is no if you're, the question is asked, because the second question is, is there more than one code here? And there's not more than one code there if the target reached 
of that counter has hit 1. There is only one code there. The only time the question will be correct, or will be answered yes, of is there more than one code here, is if the target reached of our counter set to a target count of 2 gets a target reached, then yes, we have more than one code here, and so that counter will send an open to that question saying that if you are asked the question again, then your answer is yes. Now the last question is all based on uh, what's happening in the platform prior to this platform. So we only need to use one of the counters from the last platform, uh, at the one that's set to a target count of 1, and we're using that one to answer the last question. So if the target reached message comes out, it means there is one code in that counter, and so that will send a close to the last question, basically telling it your answer is no. Now, if that counter hits zero, if the zero reach message comes out, then yes, all the codes are gone from the last platform, so we will send an open to the last question saying your answer is yes. So that's how we're going to control the yes-no flowchart that we just designed here, is we're using these counters to answer the questions, or to set the questions up so that when the question is asked from the trigger area, the signal will flow through the right path and come out at the proper answer. Now, we're almost at the end of how this flowchart is going to work. Uh, the next step we're going to have to take is we're going to have to stop thinking of the answers here as yes and no. We're going to remove the yes and no from this flowchart to really start sinking in what we've been doing here. So we're going to remove the yes and no, and we're going to change the yes and no to instead read output and input block, because these are in fact three logic gates. And the questions are being asked, are being controlled by those counters. So the questions we've designed, they're valid questions, and we're controlling the state of those logic gates from those counters. So now, uh, when we receive an input from the orange team stepped on on our first logic gate, uh, if it's an output, it will be answering a yes to are the memory blocks all empty. If it's an input blocked, it's a no which will ask the next next question, uh, is there more than one code here, also controlled by the counters? If it's a yes, then the output will do its thing. If it's a no, the signal will go out input blocked to ask the next question, which is the third logic gate. And again, if it's an output, it will do what we've told it to. And if it's an input blocked, it will say you can't do that. And, of course, these arrows that have been pointing to the top of the questions, they're just the input to a logic gate. So really, this is one way you could design um, a little bit of more advanced logic by looking at a logic gate as a yes-no question at first, figure out how to set those logic gates up so they are answering the question properly, and then figure out the uh, trigger or the input that you are going to use to ask the question in the first place. So I hope this has been helpful at all. If it has, great. If it hasn't, send me questions. I can clarify any point that I messed up on. But I hope this helps a few people start delving into more advanced logic. And if it does, great. So again, this is Sumerian. I hope this was slightly helpful and have yourselves all a wonderful day.